The open world RPG has become one of the most dominant and beloved formats in all of gaming, and also the most abused. Like anything that garners this much attention, it's pretty natural for everyone to want to capitalize on the popularity, the money-making capabilities, and this has produced some of the most garbage, boring video games imaginable. So, what does a good open world game need to have? Well, like every other game that has ever existed, it needs to be fun, but maybe more so than any other game, you need to justify why I'm running around this gigantic map that is so complicated, that has so many different directions. First, you take me to East Jesus, then West Cumtown. The locations are never close to each other. So why? Why am I doing this? It is absolutely crucial for the game to answer this question early, early on. Is it because of the gameplay? Do I want to keep going because the stories, the various stories, are interesting? Is it a combination? Is it something else? There needs to be a factor that keeps me entertained. Otherwise, what's the point? Just make a regular game. But enough bullshit, let's get to it. It should be surprising that the open world RPG format can so often fall flat on its face when it comes to its world, which doesn't make a lot of sense. This world that you create needs to be alive vibrant and have its own personality. It needs to be worth exploring. It needs to have something unique but also familiar that draws you in. Of course, that's much easier said than done, but look, there's a reason why the consumer base often pays $60 for these games. It's usually AAA studios making them. They have the resources and they have the time. So, what do these vague characteristics mean? Well, basically, I want to care about the small details, the Easter eggs, all these things that make up a world that you can immerse yourself in. Otherwise, again, like I said, there's really no point. I also want to be drawn away from the beaten path of the main story as often as possible because these little things that you get into give the game longevity. And that's important because you have to survive hundreds of hours of this shit. I'm making it sound like playing video games is a death sentence, but you know what I mean. You know that beginner side quest to almost every single open world RPG basically forces you to go on? If that shit is ass, you are way less likely to seek them out for the rest of the game. And this cuts down on potential playtime time and how often you go back to that particular game. If the streets or grasslands are just copy and pasted assets with copy and pasted activities, this is obviously very boring. I want variety, I want a living environment to take control over, to scrutinize and to absorb. There's also games where the world comes at you in very jarring but exciting ways like Elden Ring or Breath of the Wild. That being said, I'm going to tell you some of my favorite elements from some of my favorite open world RPGs to at least begin to answer the question of what makes a perfect one. Now, anyone that knows me is very aware of how much I love the Yakuza series. In one moment, I'm internalizing and coping with the death of yet another beloved character, and in the very next one, the Yakuza boss of a no-name family is trying to force me into some sexual fetish that involves dressing up as a baby and having a woman take care of you. The range that this game possesses is unreal. Now, I'm not a big fan of sticking to a formula in art, like if a movie or video game series does it, but I think Yakuza is the closest thing to perfecting a formula while still being able to keep it fresh that I've seen in quite some time. So, about that Yakuza boss with mommy issues, you find all sorts of gems like that in the secondary content of this game. The side stories are packed with hilarious, tragic, and just straight up unusual moments. On top of that, you have casino and card games, a batting cage, darts, fishing, karaoke. It doesn't even really begin to touch the surface. I 100%ed two of these games and I spent over 300 hours between them. I got them for like 12 bucks. The fact that the Yakuza formula continues to succeed for eight main games now is very telling of how fun that structure is because it allows for enough freedom to change the routine up and tweak it a little bit so that when you do take risks, they're safe ones to take. If a side story is trash, it's one out of more than 100. 
Of course, in a video like this, you have to talk about GTA at least a little bit. You may not be a big fan of sobering reality in your media, but you have to admit, GTA consistently delivers immersive and interesting stories with a fair amount to do. All of this is particularly remarkable when you think about the fact that GTA is just a shooter. It's a third person shooting game. But there's enough variety in the little things outside of that core mechanic, driving being a major one, as well as the draw of everything else I've talked about and will talk about to keep at least me going when 100%ing this game. If I had to take specific things from Grand Theft Auto, give me the NPC interactions when you pass by. I got a potential buyer. No, I'm not at liberty to say who. My mom's basement in Richmond Hills. It's climate controlled down there. Eyes on the prize, boss. You should get some help with that personality of yours. Oh! Give me that one radio show with the wacky people calling in with their fucked up stories. Let's go to the phones. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Hey, you ever had possum? That's some good eating. Nah, <laughs> I really can't say I have. Well, hell, you ought to try it sometime. I tell you, man, it's good eating. Possum, raccoon, even zebra meat C cooks up pretty good. Uh... Do you have anything else to say or... Pigeons. Aside from its goofy talk shows, GTA Radio is home to some really fantastic music. I would give you some examples, but I cannot distill the hundreds of tracks in that game to just a few that I like, because I absolutely adore a few dozen of them. But rest assured, there's something, music-wise, for everyone. From Danny Brown, Mac Miller, Kendrick Lamar, to Lord, Lady Gaga, to Elton John, and Def Leppard, old school hip-hop, punk rock, blah, blah, blah. I mean, how the fuck did they not go absolutely bankrupt getting the rights to all these famous and expensive songs? In an open world game, the soundtrack is crucial to building the world's vibe and atmosphere. In the case of GTA, you get to pick that vibe however you want, whenever you want. And there's no lack of freedom in how you do that. Part of figuring out how to build the quote-unquote perfect open world game is building a world that's immersive but isn't constrained in ways it doesn't need to be. It kind of makes sense that in real life you can listen to whatever you want in your car. So, in a game based on real life, it follows that you can listen to whatever you want in your car. Music intermission. Ah, uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. What does this game do poorly? I ask this because listing out what it does right is a taller and much more tedious task. It does almost everything right. From its variety of carefully crafted gameplay mechanics and puzzles to its breathtaking scenery, Breath of the Wild encapsulates what an open world game really should be. So what would I single out if I'm making an open world RPG that isn't BOTW? Well, probably its structure. The ability to go anywhere on the map whenever you want and have it be the right way basically no matter what is super refreshing and freeing. Would that be more difficult to implement in a game that has a more linear storyline, like Yakuza for example? Sure. But here's the thing, I don't get paid the big bucks to iron out the kinks that come with video game innovation. I don't get paid at all. I made this video while elbow deep in Albanese gummy worms, and that's where this video will end. Thank you for watching, thank you for chilling, and as always, peace the fuck out. Bye bye!